Coach, how you doing? I'm doing good, DC. Thanks for having me on. It's been like only a couple months. You know, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we, Thanks we, for coming we, on, We should have had you Thanks on a long time on. ago. How that is Ryan Clark. Ryan Clark is a Super Bowl <laughs> champion for the Pittsburgh Steelers and my, my partner in the show, and we're both honored to have you. We are, nice, Coach. Nice to be on here with you, Ryan. Let's not get in any arguments, yes, though, sir. okay? No, I'm oh always arguing with DC. Better. That's wow. it. Wow. You hear I that? Yeah, I don't argue... I don't argue with you. I just argue with DC. DC is all excited. Oh, we have six champions. Look at what we do. We're so great. Yeah. American Kicks Boxing Academy. We win all the time. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to respect you, coach, because you are the guide and the guiding light over there. But I'm going to have to keep messing with DC so I can keep his head a little smaller than it's already blown up to be. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, so I love back... DC so much. It's almost nothing you can say. That's gonna change my opinion of him. <laughs> that's my good, my man. <laughs> Love you to death, coach. Hey, coach. So let's get to Saturday night in Abu Dhabi. The training camp for Islam was spent over there at the NAS uh, training facility in Dubai. You guys put in a ton of work. You've been there for two months. How close to the plan did that fight go? How close to what you guys worked on, which has always been. Father's plan, Habib's father's plan, did the fight look like inside the Octagon Saturday night? Uh, well, you know, from the very start of this training camp, uh, he had actually a perfect training camp. He had no injuries. Uh, everything was on point. His weight point, uh, weight was on point. Everything was on point for this one. So uh, the game plan was perfect uh, that Habib and I executed. And, and the beauty about Islam is like, you know, you know, DC, he's so well-rounded that even if we had one game plan, we can change it in an instant because he's so versatile in everything he does that even if we're planning on taking the guy down, we could have just said stand, you know, or we say stay on the outside like Matador style, you know, or be on the inside brawling. Uh, uh, he's so well-rounded and, and so well-trained that we can do whatever we want with him. And if I'm not mistaken, just from me watching all the fights and being involved with him, I rarely see him ever get hit. So he might be one of those individuals in the lightweight division or any division that rarely gets hit. Coach, you know, looking at this fight and some of the things that Charles Oliveira had accomplished before this fight with Islam, it almost seemed that he was at a point rising to be one of those guys to be compared to Habib Nurmagomedov. So how was Islam Mahachev able to dominate him both on the feet and when he was able to take him down to the mat and submit him? Well, it was, it's very simple. He's just that good. You know, a lot of people, mm. you know, they, uh, they would say things like, well, hey, he hasn't deserved it. He, he's only fought one guy, this and that. Now he's getting a title shot, et cetera, et cetera. But the people that know, the people that train with him, they know how good he is. And I've said it, I don't know how many times that in all the sparrings that I've had here with Habib, uh, that no one's ever beat any rounds from him, you know, except one person. And that's Islam Makachev. He's the only one that's been able to win rounds against Habib. Nobody in the history of AKA that's within the weight that sparred Habib has ever won a round against him except Islam Makachev. So... That being the reason, that's that that's my crystal ball. That's like it's like right. there's no other secret thing I can say other than I see it with my own eyes. <laughs> right, coach. How good this guy is. <laughs> yeah. Javier, you said that Islam is one of those guys that barely gets hit. Ryan Clark, I'll tell you the stat. This was one that we had on the broadcast last weekend, or we were told in the broadcast meetings. Charles Oliveira broke the record for significant strikes landed against Islam Mahachev in his career. And it was nine, Ryan. It was nine significant strikes <laughs> that he landed on, sa well, on DC, Saturday. And that's the record. He's taking everybody to the mat and submitting them and dominating them. Like, how is he going to yeah. get hit? And this guy is freaking phenomenal. Bro, it's crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. But, Hav, when you look at this performance and you look at what he was able to do, Charles Oliveira, it leads to the question, what's next? Because we have seen Charles Oliveira yes. dominate this weight class. How long do you forecast Islam Mahashev holding on to this lightweight championship and have you, and I know Islam hasn't yet because he's so grateful to be the champ, have you even started thinking about things that are bigger for Islam? Like maybe he goes up and tries to challenge for another championship to try and really build on the legacy that he's starting to build now. 
Well, I can tell you guys this. Uh, watching one of his interviews, he said he's going to defend the title as many times as possible and then go up to the 170 pound division and win it there. Hey, look. Uh, I 100 Look behind you, know he's Usman. Going to. Look at Usman. Yeah, the, the next champ right behind me. Yes. He had to show everybody. <laughs> he he's let everybody know he's coming. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Hav. I'm sorry. Finish hey, your coach. answer. Oh, yeah. So, uh, basically, uh, I forgot the question. Can Newsman's just looking at me, just wanting to, my room number again so he can charge more charges to my room. I have one question. <laughs> hey, Coach, you know, you, you, you talked yes. about Islam having such an opportunity uh, to dominate as being one of the only guys to have taken a round from Habib Nurmagomedov, who many consider the GOAT of the UFC, of the of mixed martial arts. But you look at Alexander Volkanovsky, who's number one pound for pound in the entire UFC. When you think about a matchup like that, how would you see preparing Islam to face a, a, a seasoned and veteran champion like Alexander Volkanovsky? Well, you know, he's pound for pound number one. You have to give him huge respect, huge props. He's going up at another weight division, another huge respect, huge props. When he walked into uh, the cage to do the stare down with, with, uh, with Islam, I saw a very fit, very confident, uh, you know, guy that to me looked like he weighed 170, 175. So the weight difference isn't going to be mm -hmm. too much. What only thing I saw mm -hmm. that, that, that favored us was the height and I believe 100% okay. the, the grappling and, and the wrestling. On the stand-up, mm -hmm. uh, let's see how good he is. You know, we're going to have to test it. You know, uh, we're going to test him everywhere. Um, but, you know, he's a definite challenge. There's just pound for pound uh, number one for a reason. You know, and if we don't respect yes, that sir. and I don't watch the film on him, then I'm going to be in trouble. So I have to watch film on him before I can actually give you a definite answer of what we can or can't do. Um, but what yes, I can sir. tell you is Islam can do whatever we need him to do. Mm -hmm. You know how being in the octagon with those guys the other day, you could feel the energy that is building between the fight from Mahachev and Volkanovski, especially with Islam willing to go out to Australia and fight him in his hometown trying to defend his championship. But I want to ask you to speak to the closeness of this team within the team because there's the mm -hmm. AKA team, there's the Eagles MMA team, there's Abdul Manap Nurmagomedov's team. Speak to the closeness of Habib and Islam and Manap and Usman and Umar and Islam, uh, Islam Zuba. You know, like so many guys that they kind of converged on San Jose and they really have changed the culture of the American Kickboxing Academy. Speak to the relationship and how much pride these guys take in representing uh, Habib's father uh, and his great name and all the effort and energy he put into help into produce these champions well you know the thing with these guys is it's not like they just came together just within the last couple of years they've been with each other since childhood since they were 10 5 10 years old 12 years old these guys have had a bond 20 something plus years and and that's a real brotherhood and they've been here with me habib has been with uh, with me since 2012 and, and same thing here. Habib bonded really well, especially with you, DC. He, you, you probably, you and him will probably have the best bond out of all the fighters that I have here. But he bonded with everybody, as you know. Uh, his care for Luke Rockhold when Luke Rockhold left the gym, I'd always keep getting calls from Habib, Coach. Please try to get him to come back. He needs to come back here. He needs us. No, Coach. No, we're a team. We're a team. That's the kind of, of care and heartfelt, uh, uh, you know, leadership skills that, that Habib had. And I know you know that, DC, because he probably talked to you on many occasions that we need to stick together, you know. And that's what they do. When you're in the team, you're in the team. Bilal Muhammad uh, was an outsider uh, on, on when he came in to train with us. And at the very end, what was he? What did he talk about? He talked about the brotherhood, how they all accepted him, how they all helped him. And now he's part of the brotherhood. You know, that's what these guys are all about. Once you're in the brotherhood, that's it. You're not out. You're never out. Mm -hmm. Javier, Ryan Clark taught me something. It's it's a little bit of like slang. They say give. I've seen them on TV, you know. They talk about giving people their roses while they're here, Ryan. You know that thing y'all say all the time, like give them his roses. Yeah, I right. got you. Yeah. Javier, let me ask you this question. Ryan, and, and 
Javier, are you ready to take your roses as you are now a guy that has trained six mm. UFC champions and yeah. have seven UFC belts? Javier Mendez, are you the greatest coach in MMA history? Oh, wow. Uh, I'm a good coach. <laughs> I've been fortunate. <laughs> I've had I've had a lot of great things. Zinkin Entertainment really helped a lot by bringing Cain Velasquez, DC, one of the greatest of all time, you know. And I've had fortunate, uh, uh, you know, connections with people that I that I happen to see. Uh, King, because of you, DC, Habib came to me indirectly because you brought King Mo to me, King Mo uh, Muhammad Bilal. Wow. He he's the one that brought Habib. So I've been fortunate that that way, you know. I, I I don't know anything else to say other than I think I've just been very fortunate, and and my bond with my Dagestani guys is so strong that uh, there's more champions to come. So uh, I'm not ready for anything other than I'm ready for the next champ, and I believe it's going to be uh, Usman, you know. And then after that, I really believe that uh, Umar. You know, Habib's cousin, he's going to be the, the, the next, uh, you know, champion for the Bantamweights in, in, in the UFC, 100%. I really believe that in my heart. I see the kid. I see how great he is. And I really don't think anybody's going to beat him. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.